The account in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created what? The heaven and the earth. And in verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And that's why it says, And the earth became chaotic. Wherever there is darkness, there is chaos. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord moved. With the Spirit of the Lord moving, there was still darkness upon the face of the deep. Until God said, in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Now, the moment light showed, darkness lost relevance. He did not hear, And let there be light. And darkness was still making noise. I said, Light, you should not come. Light, you should not come. No. Light trumps, dominates, overpowers darkness anytime, any day. It dominates darkness. In anywhere light is introduced, darkness will always flee. There's no two ways about it. The Bible said in Genesis 1.16, God made two great lights. Two what? Great lights. The greater light, so two of them are great. The greater light to rule the day. Even in the night, he said also, even a lesser light has more power over night. Even, even when the light was less, it was still ruling. Listen to me. You cannot be illuminated and be relegated. You cannot carry light and be what? At the back of life. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 5 verse 15. Neither do men light up a candle and do what? Put it under a bush. No! It's not possible. If the candle is enlightened, it must be what? On the candlestick and give it light to everyone that is in the house. If you are enlightened, they will spot you. You know, when I see people complain, you know, when some people talk about this, all those stories. You know, in, in this place, they do I am. In this place, no, I, I want to be a part of they, they, nobody wants to. Nobody wants to greet me. Nobody wants to this one. They, they shift me. They, you are not like, if you are lighting enough, they find you. Haven't you seen that wherever there is light, the ants will gather? Once you on the light, everything will start coming towards it. It's, instead of complaining that they are pushing you behind, complain that you, don't, you are not enlightened enough for them to see you. Now, because when you complain, they are pushing, you are shifting the blame. When you are lighted, you become the center point. I've only seen in some concerts, the moment the one that is holding the microphone is holding the microphone, the spotlight is on them. The spotlight is on the one who is at the center of the stage. So it shows that that individual has something to offer. So when you are feeling timid, it simply means you have not been enlightened enough in the things that you need to do. Light has one ultimate source, and that is God. Every light. There are three dimensions of light. There is the physical light, which creates sight. There is the mental light, which is created by knowledge or information. There is the spiritual light or illumination, which is by revelation. All the three dimensions of light get their source from God. Because it's even God that made the sun and the star. You know that the sun was created one day and the sun will still go one day. That is why when people worship the sun, it's an insult on divinity. How can you worship a creature when the creator is available? Some people say that the sun is so powerful. What is powerful about the sun? It's one of the creatures of the creator. So God is the ultimate source of light. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, he said, This then is the message that we are bringing across to you. The message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Somebody say God is light. God is light and in him is what? No darkness at all. He is the father of what? Lights. Whether physical light, mental light and also spiritual light. He is the father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So you don't keep God only in one religious corner there. No, God is everywhere. Everything is at the side of him. He is the power that illuminates. Can I tell you the truth? If you function by the Holy Ghost, your intelligence is always upgraded. He affects your capacity to understand. And that is why in our mind, we think that you can't use the Holy Ghost to run a business. But can I tell you the truth? It's the Holy Ghost that will make you succeed in a business. He is the X factor for a child of God. You can't use the Holy Ghost. They say they teach you seven ways to keep a woman. By the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you. Because the Holy Ghost has the capacity to make you to understand all truth about marriage, all truth about relationship, all truth about business, all truth about the things that you do. But when he's so 
gentle because he knows what he has. You must ask him to come. He can, if I know that you need me, I can't be begging you to come into your life. You must be the one knocking at my gate and ask, oh God, well, can, can you come in? I can't be begging you. That's why the Holy Ghost doesn't beg you. If you keep him aside, he will allow you to be struggling. He will allow you to be struggling when you are tired and you say, Holy Ghost, I have done everything now. I, I need you now. He say, are you ready now? Can we now walk gently? And if I give you instruction, don't fight it because he quench not, he's quenchable. Despise not, he's despisable. And some instructions he may give you may look simple in quote in the eyes of ordinary men. But it's so powerful and potent that can change your life.